Hi, John here. Um, today is Monday the 24th, 24th of October 2016. It happens to be a uh, Labour Weekend holiday today. So I'm just uh, calling uh, a Navy guy to uh, Bruce to um, See if I can get him to come up to Waitangi. Here goes. I'll call him. <coughs> Check with Tini Total or two. Hello, is that Bruce? Yes, uh, John Wanoi in Auckland here. I hope you're not finished. Uh, you're finished watching the news, <laughs> or you can talk. <laughs> Uh, I had a talk with uh, Jim. I'm organising the uh, uh, the day at Waitangi on on the 28th for the um, uh, 182 year celebration of the Confederation flag. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm being instrumental with the whole history of the whole Confederation flag with Mohi Manuko and and a few others who have died now and left me with everything. Uh, so I've managed to have the marae before on the 15th. Uh, the Waitangi Marae I'm talking about, the top one. So the National Trust and Peter Peroni and his uh, uh, executive have let me have it again to go inside the pare and to do the uh, traditional uh, 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 celebration inside the pare. Uh, with the, I'm hoping I've written to the uh, the British Navy, they're our partners, and I've written to uh, John Martin. Uh, and also um, to uh, spoke with um, the Devonport Naval Base with John Harrison. Uh, so they're they're waiting for a um, for a answer back from John Martin. Uh, but they're all prepared to go in with a Kapahaka group from the Navy. Uh, that's all being set up with six of the Navy guys there. And so uh, they're going along with their hapa group, uh, uh, kapahaka group with the uh, with John Harrison's in the kapahaka too, and with uh, with uh, the National Trust uh, uh, kapahaka group as well. Yeah, the both of them will be challenging the flag going up, and um, but um, I think we'll be absent of a 21 gun salute for that 182 year day. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, you, you, you would be able to come up and we can accommodate you up there and, uh, and get you up there because it's a long trip. Oh, what day is that? So, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm in Auckland, but, but um, uh, if you can influence them to be there, all, all I need to make sure there's a representation, even if it's one of the Navy, to come there and stand there with us for partnership to Britain. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Who, who, who? Oh, yeah, John, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so he passed it on to the other guys. Um, um, I forgot what his name is now. Uh, he's in charge. 
Um, yeah, yeah, that's him. That's him. Tikani Te Weata. Yeah, it's him that's that's organised. So if if you can catch up to where they've got to, yeah, yeah. with with getting the high high authority from the government or whatever to to le allow them to come there, then that'll be quite fitting. And Kingi Toto is all ready for that. So I've, I've organised a whole lot. And Kingi says, "We're going on the other side." I said, "Yeah, we're going on again." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he couldn't quite believe his, his lucky stars that he's got a chance to talk over there. <laughs> but the government... Uh, 020 4085 1042 Yeah, yeah, if you got an email, I could have given you an email. Oh, you're in the bush, you're, you, go, you go by a carrier pigeon. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm from Te Araroa. So, uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. But I'm doing a bit of work with uh, um, Tumutumu Pairoa. I went down to... Uh, to uh, um, Omayo, they, they had a new thing there, a new uh, um, orchard, uh, just last week I think it was, so it's, yeah, so I'm on over there with the, with the block there and um, uh, Port Awanui, I'm trying to get that sorted as well, uh, Rotoria, on the, on the beach there, but I'm mixed up in, in all the tidal energy project and things that I were ready to do at some stage, um, and before I, you know, I'm 67 now, so I'm sort of um, second time around, I'm trying to keep myself. <laughs> I go to the gym up here and I do, oh, it's a $38 million outfit. So I, I, I push along with those young guys and, you know, they keep me buzzed up and the old guys look at me and say, oh, no. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I said, I'm making some muscles. What do you think it is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good because, yeah, uh, let me know. Um, but uh, I was prepared to put you up up there and, and get you up there in the mana bus. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, no problems. Uh, but but you yeah, let me know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, yeah. There we go. That's Bruce. <coughs> Bruce, uh, Puke Puke, he's a, 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 a Navy Komatua, so he's in the Potiki, and um, uh, Jim Week or two got me to ring him, so that's good, um, he'll encourage the Navy to make their appearance, because I can never tell, and I'm not, I'm not talking on, on that sort of level, Anything with mechanics and, and engineering and sea and titles and turbines and aeroplanes and scuba diving and things like that. Yes, and kinners. I had some of those today and yesterday. My brother, my boy went out diving. So, uh, but um, when it comes to Navy, uh, I'm getting around to it in politics uh, in Britain. I've got our, our political party set up in Britain with Matt Taylor. He's got his SOS Independent Party, so we're hooking on to that and taking the both of them in tandem together um, because he has his um, interest in the police marine um, force, uh, ex-marine uh, police. And uh, that's good for me because uh, I like things straight and uh, no messing around with the law. Uh, so he can follow the... Um, what I'm doing online on Facebook and um, um, I can rely on him <coughs> to do the work for us on that other end with our flag and this is one of the influential uh, Komatuas who are doing his treaty claims at the moment and so Kingi is doing his, Kingi Toru, a chief at Waitangi, he's doing his treaty claims, they all seem to be doing their treaty claims when what I'm doing here there's a lot in it uh, that will um, void all the treaty claims. Uh, there's more in this lot with the flag. 
uh, being commercial contract business of settling accounts and checking lands and everything that we're enforcing inside that marae on the 28th. But uh, never mind, he'll uh, talk to John Harrison, or he calls him Hone, I'm a Hone too. Um, and so um, hopefully that they will put something together um, diligently and I'm following the law as best I can without getting smart uh, here and in Britain and in the face of adversity uh, around the world online. So whatever I say in statements and um, videos and also um, affidavits and court matters is correct as far as the law is concerned. I'll follow whatever law, but we're using King William's law, 1832, 1837, inside that marae on King Itodua's ancestral land, which is back to the beginning. We've gone back, we're following the ship back to England and the trail of um, corruption that's ensured since Queen Victoria time after King William the fourth time. Uh, so I'm happy to, to talk to him. He seems a cheerful bloke. And he's um, went to Fi Wanoa's Tangi back in Te Araroa. So he's not too far away from Te Araroa from Mokoriki, but I'm um, just telling him I went down to Omayo to the um, uh, kiwi fruit farm there uh, with Tumutumu Pairoa. And I was impressed with the work they do with the OPEG um, horticulture on that block. Uh, so I'm waiting for the Timutumu Pairoa uh, to give me the um, uh, answer to the Port of Awanui blocks, uh, hitting a, a 10 block in particular, uh, or the, hitting a 12 block, but more so the hitting a, a 10 block, which is the one I want for the tidal energy turbine base. And so that does matter, otherwise if we don't get it, it'll be, um, I was talking to Richard today, my, my, my boy, and he showed some interest now in the Marangaro C12 block at the lighthouse. Now I've already got a um, permit from the trust or that's Te Tumutumu Pairo now, Maori Trust, uh, for uh, aqua farms there, right on the beach, on the beach front, and Papakainga, that means a little village. So we can go straight there if all else fails on Rotoria blocks, where I'm a shareholder owner. And uh, the Maori Land Court has to approve that, uh, whoever's been selected for the three blocks there, hitting a 12, hitting a 10 and hitting a 8 blocks um, where the uh, fishers are in the hitting a 11 block, Richard Fresh, Fisher and Leslie. I get on really well with them, Peachy, Leslie Peachy and the Peachy family with my father's brother Ted Wano and Doris Peachy. So that's my family on that block and I support them managing the A10 block and the, or the A12 block and lease it, carry on leasing it but I want to start to build things there once we get through Waitangi on the 28th, uh, Declaration of Independence Day, uh, 182 years um, since the British landed in Kororareka. Jim Wikotu uh, he's from Whakato here. He'll um, take over um, talking in Māori uh, to the Kororareka uh, ship and Kingi will take care of talking on the Waitangi Admiralty ship under the King William IV jurisdiction of Admiralty financial martial law and also the Admiralty court martial law inside that Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Okay, so I'm acting sheriff with this hat and this eight point star straight to King Ernest Augustus wearing the eight point star. You'll see I put it online with, um, with the latest uh, posting 
um, with um, Hongiheka chief, 1820, and Te Rawaikato chief Waikato, or Tainui, down in that area, Mangatauteri, um, went to England in 1820 to Cambridge University and learned English and all these laws and military hardware, muskets and things, for that's what um, Hongiheka had, and Te Rawaikato Whareherehere is Mohi Manukau's and sister gave me all that information on him and his son, um, um, Referefa Manikau. The In Russell, up, up, up there in Rafiti, up on the hill, there's a grave with Rewa on it. We went up there, I filmed all these, I filmed Mohi Manikau, pointing out all the historic Manikau points on the land. From there, down to the Kaipara, the Bay of Islands, by here, down to Kaipara, right through the Kaipara, down to um, Auckland and uh, Manukau, and down to Ratna. I carried him around all over the place filming and interviewing him on the old videos here. And his story then wrote it off his whakapapa to this referee from Manukau. He was locked up on um, Kawa Island. Um, by the uh, British forces <coughs> and he s escaped and swam back and they don't know how he managed to swim all the way back to the mainland and hid away all that time. Never got him after that. So that's Mohi Manukau's story and his son Iru has a lot of the information from uh, the Pope and the Malta, Prince Peter I was communicating with him at the time while he was alive and we sent 20 flags for 20 state countries where these flags were going to go in the New World Order right back then, 1985 up to 2000 before Mohi died. Uh, he left me with all that lot and his Y121 treaty claim. I've got it here. I've got everything and a lot of it none of their family has got. And I've stitched it all together. I've lived with him and Rita, his daughter, for six years in their house and writing up this when I was staying in Remuera and um, um, wrote up his history and clearly defined it in Kapuru de Jain, Aotea, and the history of the four tribes of Arawa, Te Arawa, uh, Hapui uh, and Ngāti Whātua and um, one more Aotea, Ngāpui, Ngāti Whātua and Waikara uh, something like that, anyway I've got it there, it's a carving that was found in the Kaipara Harbour and it had clearly a parliament and four pillars and the four tribes <coughs> on it. Great Waikato, Altea, Ngāpuhi, and one more. I can't think of the other one. I just can't think of it at the moment. Waikato, must be Ngāti Whātua, is the other one. Anyway, I got it all. I know it back to front. That's where the title came from, the Manukau Land Company in Glasgow, England. And that's been, that's, I've just put it together uh, very accurately with Hongiheka taking care of the battles with the musket and this is a British mentality of how to conquer people no matter what, conquer people and then Te Rawaikato Whareherehere was the brain behind the bank, the native bank that he set up and it went from there onwards into the other Akaroa Bank and the Aotearoa Bank and then the BNZ, then to the League of Nations and then into the World Bank. That is our titles right through where the money, follow the money, back from King William. We're going backwards through those ships on Kororareka, the mast where the flag flies. The Navy is the recipient of the contract. 
when the captain hopped off his ship on the land, he bought the sale and purchase agreement. These were pre-done with these two chiefs in England. They lived there for over 10 years after 1820. Those two chiefs got there. When they came back, that's when Te Rawaikato Wharehere is supposed to have gone back to Mangatauteri. I won't say any more than that. I know what happened. I know what happened with him. But <clears throat> uh, I'll leave that for another day. All I'm saying is those are the two chiefs that put the contracts together to sell the land. And Mohi Manaka was with the Rogan family, um, the judge. John Rogan and Dick Rogan. Judge John Rogan married Mohi Manakao's family and Dick Rogan married my Wānō family, or Aiti Wānō, my great-great-grandmother, and set up that lot down there and you've got the native land court in Gisborne for all the native titles. Then John Rogan put all the British titles together with all the other judges in Helensville. That's where they first put them together, Helensville Courthouse. Okay, so there's a 10 acre block there that are meant to get back for Mohi and his Queen Street. You see it's got his name all over Queen Street. And so I'm yet to sort all that lot out, but I've taken the whole lot as one title of the Manukau Land Company's titles. You just follow the Manukau Land titles where they all went. And you'll find they went right over the country. What the, man, what the British did was confiscated all the New South Wales Australian titles, John Key's titles, and they were sold the land up north and sold the land on the west coast down to the South Island. Those were all done from the New South Wales government. And the time that um, <clears throat> Busby um, declared uh, the 1835 declaration, well, first of all, the 1834, uh, 20th of March 1834, that's when the Navy uh, first uh, set up the government of Britain there in Russell, Kururareka, Russell, and then um, um, Honeheke demolished their um, set up and so the ships of Admiralty blew the whole place out and destroyed the whole of Kororareka and they shifted the government to Auckland. All right, so and then it went into the Manukau titles, the new titles that they seized all those titles and then reissued those titles. Those are the ones I'm holding here uh, that I've picked up and, and went through. I was helping Mohi Manukau do his Y121, his treaty claim, and that took forever, and I got to the end of it, really. Then I put my own treaty claim together for the Moai um, and the hapu of my Uetaha uh, chief at the east coast, from the land from Cape Runaway, through the back of Portaka, through to the Rokumara Ranges, onto the back of Maraia, 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 and Tiki Tiki, cross to Tiki Tiki from Maraihara, that's Marae Hara, that's the Marae there. See, they, they were all Marae's, Marae's in Potaka, then the other Marae at Marae Hara, and then the Marae at Tiki Tiki, then the Marae at Rangitukia, then from Rangitukia down towards East Cape, and so we had all that, and then from there back to Te Araroa, and then from Te Araroa to Punaruku, then to Hicks Bay, Matakawa Point, and to Lotton Point, and back to Cape Runaway. All that area was my Uetaha Hapu chief, and Sue Nakora is coming up to Waitangi to put her proclamation in. They'll all put their proclamations into that Waitangi Marae. I'm setting it up for specific people to talk, only the people who talk to the flag and the Navy. <clears throat> so they know who they are. Those old people will be the only ones that will be talking. And she's one of them. That I've followed over 20 years. And she's very knowledgeable in the Labour, Par Labour Party as the Ma Maori policy maker. She did the 1986 
Constitution Act and translated all the Urupas and all the uh, specific Maori names and meanings and everything into the government. Okay, so now she's got her own Maori government as a Prime Minister. That's her business on the Queen's side. All the King's side is in that Waitangi Marae straight to Britain. From there to Kororareka, straight to Britain. Okay, this side in the Titi Marae is basically for John Key's government to settle their accounts on that side. That's where her Maori government sits, in that marae, not on the other side. Okay, it's on the side. That side on the other side is around the world. This side in Titi Marae is for domestic around the country, to this land of New Zealand. Okay, when you get to the other marae, that's global with the flag. That part of the flag went around the world with the Queen, and this side went around the country. And it had no legal effect until we went on the 15th of April 2016, this year, into that Waitangi Marae and swore it open for business as a legal flag of jurisdiction of Admiralty and the laws of King William IV, 1837, applies. You see the time of 1834 when the Navy arrived? That's the date <coughs> that we're sitting the precedent case of first arrival of those British people, not all the other British people who were already here on the Australian title. You had to have a British title with your name on it. And the Williams family, I've got those titles here, Henry Williams and, and the Hare Otutonga, those families and their title in Waitangi, one house title right through the Bear Valley is here. And over here in Auckland, one of Manukau is here. Okay, so those two are the only two that went to Britain in the Confederation. So uh, with Iru Manukau being in China, it's conflict of interest with China against Britain, where I'm going straight back to Britain because they are obligated to us and all our allegiance is to the king there, no one else, not to the Chinese government or anybody else. But that's where the bank is. Okay, that Bank of England is answerable to us in this eight-point star that we're claiming the New World Order right here inside that whare, the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, the highest court in the world, that the Queen ran her business. <coughs> Queen Elizabeth, back to Queen Victoria, that's Kingy. Kingy's ancestor is Queen Victoria. The Queen Victoria Trust is Kingy's business on this side in Titi Marae on this land, in this country. <coughs> the King William's titles to the New World Order and all the commerce that's defrauded from the Queen on this side through the Rothschilds marrying into the Rothschilds, marrying into the Queen Victoria bloodlines and Queen Elizabeth and her fraudulent family, royal family and elite people and the churches, the Church of England and the Catholic Church is on this side on Titi Marae to sort out, right? They have to sort out the Queen's business there. And on the other side, we send them a bill from Waitangi Marae on this side. So because the Iwi Maori is running the Waitangi Marae, it's up to Kingi Tauru, the landowner, right? His Ngāti Hapu is the legitimate original Hapu landowner of that property, the ship is on dry land, marooned there, okay, and the marae has been built with all the hapu's carvings inside, including my own from my hapu's at East Coast. We talk hapu, not iwi, because the iwi Maori belongs into this marae with the Crown Corporation Queen. The King Corporation is on the other side, in the Waitangi marae, that John Key's been usurping our mana from our flag that is sitting on the crossbar with the British flag as partners. Okay, he's sitting with his flag on top with changing the flags around, putting his flag over here opposite the British and ours up the top as a ruling authority here and right through the world. From there, the King's Bench Court and also the commerce to take us around the world and trade straight off with the instruments of the pound note 
<coughs> the gold coin, King William X of Money Act, Printing Money Act and Gold Coin Act 1834 and the um, Bank of England Act 1834 to create our own bank and use the word bank, Moai Powerhouse Bank or Moai King William the Fourth Bank or Moai Crown Bank or Moai Bank. That name sticks to that under the British Westminster Law System 1830-1837 and it's private contract we have with the British military. That's why I want the Navy to come to honour the position of the Navy, Royal New Zealand Navy, talking for the British Navy on their behalf or the British Navy themselves to send a representative through the British Embassy here, <coughs> someone to represent the Navy and unlock the flag day for us to raise the flag to the top. We have every legal, legitimate, historic, ancestral inheritance right as King William, partner, and King Ernest Augustus, living King of Britain, UK, authority to raise the flag to the top. It's nobody's business. I'm organizing that Marai myself, so I get to speak and choose the speakers, and Kingy, takes over and talks and pulls me in when it suits him as the legal chief renter. The land, the landlord, the chief rent or the um, chief commander, not commander in chief, that's a mischief. Obama is a commander in chief. Kingy is the chief commander under Admiralty Financial martial law to seize property with the pound note, debtor instrument. Okay, we don't have to go far to, to get money. We just go and visit all the fraud people and corruption that's happening. And John Keith the first one already got his name in the High Court in London. Okay, so we just write the bill. And in the end, the people of the country have a choice. You stick with the Queen, who's not there, or stick with Moai and King William, solid as a rock, memorials, okay? So it's the same as Hillary Clinton. The news says Trump's behind, and the social media with the cameras going all the time, picturing everything, everybody sticks things on online, on video, and that's got a polling of Trump being 94%, and Hillary Clinton 4%, 6%, on the vote. That's on the street. Right? That, that's, that's looking physically looking at the crowds <coughs> that are turning up at Trump's uh, rallies, uh, political rallies. So the proof's in the pudding. If Hillary loses, she'll kick up a stink and Obama will, will use this martial law, financial martial law, to create havoc in a state of emergency. He'll make a, such a racket, the same way as Hillary Clinton upset all the Trump supporters. I'm looking, I'm looking at it on film, and, and you can't help but see the crook. Things that are happening with her and the WikiLeaks, releasing all those emails and everything. That's real bad. That's, that's really putting a big stain on the law. I'm a law man, and the Reagan, Reagan judges. If I was in America, I'd, I'd put the flag up and knock them out with the British law. And the Navy has to jump in, and the British military has to jump in and fix that, if I say so, with the chiefs. I get the consent of the chiefs. <coughs> I get chosen by the chief to do what I do, because he believed me, that's why. He trusts in what I say is the best decision. But he was fright. he got a fright when I said, we're going on the other marae. He says, oh, I thought we were going in Titi, but now we're going on the other marae. That's where everything is, over there. You go and talk over there, not over here. You won't get anywhere over here. We've gone the other side. So for the very first time, he got a, a bit of a shock. But it's his land. He can say what he likes. It's not for me to say anything on his land. It's just for me to open the door and tell him, in you go and do your thing. So Jim is going to support Kingi from Whakatoa here, uh, um, Hapu. And Jim, we go to, as I've watched them for years, 
I know he doesn't miss a beat when it comes to the Navy. He's got his um, um, cousin there, or nephew, um, uh, Bruce, um, Bruce uh, Puki Puki, ex-Navy, and um, friend there, to help. That's he, Bruce, was at the treaty grounds, escorted John Key in on the treaty grounds, while Jay, uh, Jim put the flag upside down on the flagpole, raised it up upside down on the flagpole. See, I told him, no, he put it up the right way, there's no, we're not in distress anymore, that's, that's on this other marae with the treaty claim. We're going to stick, stick the treaty claims is only a fraction of what we should be getting. The other side we get 100%, 100%, I'll guarantee 100%. No compensation. We don't have compensation. We just have levy decker instruments to write the bill against this side. You see, the complaints will come in. We have a complaints authority under the Moai Crown King William Trust. We have a complaints, we put your complaints in there, and then we write it out and go straight into any district court here, or in the world for that matter, where any cases are. I'm just alerting my friend Daryl Payen in America. Um, he's watched me for a long time, the same as um, Andy Little or Gordon has watched me for years from Scotland. And um, so they, they are um, seeing sense in what I'm writing as being, it looks right, it looks right, feels right, must be right. And so we'll follow that logic and apply the principles and law of a king, not a queen, of a king. The queen owns America illegitimately, but it's only transactions. It's only paper titles and paper money that makes buildings go up and deals, rotten deals in Wall Street that screws people's money and also um, funding, uh, charity funding that screws money off people into their pockets and not for Haiti where the money should have gone. Eighty million dollars went into their pocket and only nothing much went to Haiti for all the disaster. Now they got the second disaster and no money, not much. It's the money coming from other places and not from Clinton Foundation where the money is supposed to go. Now she's an under investigation. Like the sooner they get her caught and all those involved and Obama strung up and hung. That's what this law does, Carol and Rene Powers in California. I'll be happy to have you on board at some stage, but you need to know the British law system of a king, not, not the UCC law is out the window. We don't use the UCC or canon law or civil law or any uh, um, canon law or, or, or admiralty law under the Pope or the Queen. We only use the admiralty law of those same acts under the King. Okay, we only follow what the King's laws are on that 1830, 1837 period and add to it. Right, we're starting from scratch as if we're still back at that time using those laws. And they got the pirates laws in there, you see. They've got the piracy laws in there. And where Obama is getting his piracy laws from, I um, couldn't know <coughs> how he can jump right back and get them because they've been legislated out. He, he legislated them back in for America, you see, from the king's law. One stage he called himself the king and then quickly retracted because it would have gotten him into trouble. It's like saying you can't use the word bank. We're using the word bank by rights of a contract, private contract. That the Queen has a private contract as federal state. We are calling ourselves the Moai. Uh, the Moai, King William IV, federal state, Commonwealth government of the world. So that's in that Moai, going from there to England, to Westminster. Right, that that flag actually is going from there to back backwards to Westminster, then around the world. Okay, because 
it has to connect back to the flag half of that flag in Titi Marae on the Crown Corporation Queen side to balance the books accounts. We still need John Key government to run their people because that's what their law was for, for themselves, not for us, it was for them because we had all the rights to use our own self-government, which is what's going to happen here with Sue Nakura. She can have her Maori government, but it won't be jumping from that Waitangi Marae Kingi. It will be only looking after its affairs as Maori. Maori and Maori Iwi claims. On this side, where she gets her money from, if she goes to the United Nations to get her money, she has to join the war because they're the ones that are terrorizing the American people and taking their land off them their, and taking all their guns off them and disabling them. That's what Helen Clark did here with the airport, disabled and pulled their all, the military all to bits so that we're powerless. We had to rely on a bigger power to look after us. <coughs> so um, uh, John Key is up against Sunakura because she sacked and Anne Satinan, the Governor General back then, 2012, I was there, I, I, I issued him with the, the notices to terminate his um, tenure. And he didn't write back to, to, to Sue, like he said, I'll get back to you. He never did and left. And then Jerry Matapurai came in and John Key nominated him as the Governor General when we said no. He, Nominated. So they're in trouble but from that point that Sunakora sacked the government. And she has every right as a politician, a born politician, to <coughs> replace them. But that's not my business. That's her side of the Confederation. But when it comes to Kingi has the last say on the Waitangi Marae or Titi Marae, it's his land that they park their ship on, of Admiralty on. And so I said to him, the best way, I, I told him on Waitangi Day, the 4th, the 5th and the 6th, this year I said to him, look, the only way is to seize the ship on the other side. That's what we did. We went over there and seized the ship on docking on the 15th of April 2016. We went inside that whare, Waitangi Marae, to seize the building and all its land titles that by doing that, it's gone down on the record. <coughs> what did we go in there for? See? We already said it. I already made statements on Titi Marae. I'm going to do some more statements on the 26th, 27th, before the 28th, to tell them exactly what they're in for. They're in for what they should have done long ago. That's why Mohi Manika was sitting in the corner. He wouldn't tell anybody. He wouldn't tell anybody. It took me six years to get it out of them, what they were up to, see? He was helping to sell the lands. And while the rest of the people says the Crown is selling the lands, it's actually the people who are selling it. Well, it's our own people working in the government, see? And that's how it works. If you don't know how commerce works, that's how it works. But he was doing it only because <coughs> the family uh, of Rogans were instrumental. He lived with the Rogans, the Pakeha side. That's why they hated him, because he was working with the Pakeha, holding the survey stick in the ground and pegging off all the lands and um, riding in nice flash cars. And so I, I, I was told that by other jealous people in Kaipara that didn't like well, seeing one of their own running around in a flash car going to the courts and helping the judges, you see. But he did it for a reason, and that was because it's commercial and it's carrying on from Te Rawaikato Whareherehere. There's a big story. There's a big story. It's in my head. You wonder why my ears ring. It's that summer and all the history. And I've had to stitch together because Mohi himself couldn't understand the commercial side of business. And even Edu Monaco took it on another level of uh, the stock market and the gold. <clears throat> well, I'm not touching the gold. I'm not touching the not in the sense that they trade in. I just used the levy debtor instrument pound note. Um, 
to convert fraud into cash and then build the turbines in the sea to create hydrogen to make a new economy and new business all around the world. That's what we're doing with the flag. We're going straight around the world in 250 countries with that flag on our website. <coughs> I know it's nothing happening with it, but that's the way it is. You'll see I've put the PDF file on the website, mowaypowerhouse.com, where you can see I've put all the PDF files of all the statements and documents, so it's a little bit clearer than the pictures I put on Facebook. The pictures are all right to put on screen and blow it up, <coughs> with a um, um, projector on the wall then so you can read it and that's what it's for because you can blow it up and read it just press the hold a control button down and roll your mouse to make it bigger or press the plus key and the words will get bigger so that's how you read the documents when you can't read the words that are gone on the document I squash everything, always squash everything in one page as much as I can and keep reducing the size till it fits it might not, that's our way of doing legal, by the way. We, we, we natives can write documents the way we want. It's our law. We can apply the 1830 to 1837 King William laws any way we want. It's nobody's business how we do that. That's why I'm saying on the 26th and 27th, I'll be explaining that to all the hapus to start using those laws. That's what I'm saying to Daryl Payan in California. Start using those laws because they're rigid. They, they were made for pirates in that period of time, before they reformed the Acts. King William IV reformed the Acts in his time, in his last days, in 1837, when he died. He had reformed the Acts with the Whigs uh, in Parliament, Westminster. And, but in the 1830 period, it still had pirates can get hung. The, the Hanging Chains Act is what we're using on anybody who breaks the law under that flag once we start flying around the world and trading. And you can trust the king more than you can trust the queen or Hillary Clinton at the moment. <coughs> I only say Donald Trump is a cousin of Hillary Clinton, so they're all in the same elite field. I won't trust anybody till I open their books to see how they're being defrauding the public with screwing the king's laws. The king's laws was for the common people, for the common law is quite separate to a king's law. The common law was for the people, but in a sense the king had his own laws. Okay, Until they opened the parliament up, then the parliament took his admiralty law into the parliament and took it away from him. But I'm saying at the period of 1837, our contract is still not changed, altered, or anyone can interfere, it's still a contract with Westminster and the High Court of Admiralty in London and the military. Only us can change that. King Todor is a military man in the army, so he and I, as a land commissioner, a native land commissioner, can change that. Because we got the documents and the right credentials to do it. You can't just pick anybody uh, or anyone who thinks they can do it if they haven't got the original British titles. They might have the titles from Australia. Te Turia Whenua Act comes under this um, regime under the Queen. It can't go anywhere near the King's title on, on the Waitangi Marae. That's what I'm saying. I want to make that defined um, divide between the two Queen and a King's title. Okay, and our flag is a king's flag, the only king's flag in the world. With four stars, with this eight point star on that flag in the four corners of the earth, the globe, where the Red Cross of the King George's, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, Pope, the Malta, the Templars Bar, are all inside that Red Cross. Right, so we are holding that to account. We're holding it to account to ask them, the Pope, where did he get his admiralty, financial, martial law from, to create the money wealth he got? Who gave it to him and who had authority to give it without asking us? The contractor of King William. That's the question I'm 
saying in Matayim Rai in front of everybody. Okay? I, have the, I have the right to speak in there because even the National Trust, Waitangi National Trust knows the history has to be corrected for the next generations coming up. It can't be left in tatters without being accounted for on what's from now on. It's not going to go down the track it's been doing the last few years because the wealth is gone out of the hapu to somewhere else and I know where it's gone. I know from following Mohi Manakao's trail and following everyone else's trail where that money has gone and who has been screwing who with this laws of Westminster. Okay, so Daryl came. The laws came out of Westminster for Britain, for, for America, through King George III. <coughs> um, and it went from there in this commercial years of 1830 to 1837. That's the only time the Bank Act came out, the Bank of England Act, 1834, and the Bank of England, uh, uh, the Bank of England Act under King William the Third, sorry, in 1694, Patterson's Bank, right? Patterson's Pound Note Bank. Okay, they had to sell it in the end because the Rothschilds just put them out of business and took over the bank. That's when it went all pear shaped. When Queen Victoria, they screwed Queen Victoria, made some the Cabal kids, the Rothschild kids Cabal that's trying to rule the world with our title. King William III kicked King James out and took the eight point star away from them of, of the church, St. Patrick's Church. That's why I wanted ja Jamie to come with me because she's a Patrick by surname to that line of Irish um, Patrick name in Dub Dublin where my Cosgrove comes from there too. The Cosgroves came over at the same time, married my family and the Rogan. The Rogan Scottish married my family. They knew who to go for. They knew who to marry and to bore kids to them to take our titles out of us. Okay, so but we're not going to go down that track. All we're doing is making the commerce work for the people as well to bring the wealth back to the people with this power. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to say. I just didn't think it was going to go this long, but I'm glad that we've got at least one Navy person. I could have got, I just went online, got the money bus set up for him to go up to Waitangi and then booked the motel. And now I have to turn the motel off because I sleep in the car or in the paddock or under a tree or in, in the marae. Uh, it's good enough for me. But for him, being an older person, he needs a proper place to stay. So now I have to cancel the booking of the motel and the money bus then um, I'll let Jamie know or let me know tomorrow whether she's going to go up uh, to Waitangi. Uh, but she's, uh, her mother is um, uh, still recovering from the hospital. She's back home now, so she still has to care for her and kids. Uh, so Jamie, uh, you're excused if you don't want to go up. I know you want to go up, but that's not the point. The point is the family comes first. And this eight-point star comes second. All the wealth in the world, the eight-point star of St. Patrick, your Patrick name, comes second. Your whanau and your family comes first. All the money in the world, all the gold in the world, all the king's horses and the king's men come last. And the crown jewels and the house of cards is tied up here in this eight-point star of your surname in Dublin, well, okay, so if you're not there, you're not there, and that's all there is, I just have to tell people, I'm sorry, uh, Jamie's not here, because I've pointed her to be Secretary of State, she'll make a better job than Hillary Clinton, because I'll tell her what to say, she listens to me, that's the good thing about her, she listens, not some others don't, they just get a hard heat and go the other way, but Jamie's been very loyal, and never put a foot wrong with me. She's learned a lot um, um, to um, do the um, Maori um, Moai uh, power note and also the Moai government, how that runs. So it doesn't take long to teach her. 
what to do in politics or anything that's uh, law. She's a law-minded person. She doesn't like crooked business. That's quick on it. That's quick, quick on it. So Jamie, I'm just uh, saying um, it'll fall in place as soon as I get. It's a lot of work for me on my own. Put it that way. Since Desmond's gone the other way, and we've gone one way and he's gone the other way. Um, only through misfortune at uh, Port Awanui with his cousin that's just rolled me up the wrong way and also um, Irukaina's son, uh, he knows too well that it's set up uh, a, real, a real blocker on saying who's the boss over there of the land. And so that's the end of that. I just won't take anybody who smokes dope in front of me and talk crooked uh, and blow the top off and probably say sorry the next day. No, not on. Not on. I won't waste time. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so I'll be going up to Waitangi tomorrow, straight up. Uh, if I need to go, I'll go and pick Jamie up if she decides to go up. And then she can help me to drive on the way up. But I'm feeling fitter now. Um, lost four kgs, down to about 70 or 88 now, and um, uh, pretty fit, and um, uh, ready to go and die for kinos. In fact, I'll have some for dinner afterwards, uh, just to get the taste back again. Um, so, uh, I hope that uh, a good lot of people will come. Don't forget to download the PDF file. Uh, rather than me print out a lot, I'll be printing out some tomorrow. I'll, I'll be taking a few copies of the uh, proclamation. That's the page four, um, with um, just that one page. That's all that's needed to uh, swear. I'll be reading that out, which takes five minutes, because I already had a test run. And for the main speaker speaking, they'll only speak for ten minutes. Uh, like Sue Nakora, she's only got 10 minutes because we can't muck around in the marae too long because it carries on with its normal business. We're not disrupting anything apart from doing what we are there for. And this in, this is in respect of the Waitangi National Trust and the iwi uh, um, leader there, the chairman, uh, Peter Parawani. Thank you very much for letting Kingi and I have the marae and to conduct our, our business in there um, and also to um, Murray, Murray Ratana for opening the gate for us again to thank him for um, going with us and hopefully his Kapahaka group will be there to um, challenge the flag going up just as a, a respect to the Navy uh, which who will have their own Kapahaka group with Hone uh, Harrison. Uh, he's assured me that he will put that together if he gets the nod to go ahead uh, from his uh, superior, uh, John Martin, or any other officer that will allow. So uh, Bruce um, Puke Puke is a Navy, um, ex-Navy um, officer, so he's going to speak to Pune and uh, the other fellow to Kani um, to um, make sure they have a representation there, even if it's one officer. Uh, the last day, last time we had the Waitangi Marae was on the 15th of April of this year. We had um, Paul Tipene from the Kiri Kiri um, Police Station, Constable. Um, Paul um, could come back again to witness the event. It's open to the public to come and witness this British connection to us, the first British um, settlers to come with a real estate, remember what I'm saying, real estate sale and purchase agreement that was pre-planned before that event. That's why it's lost in the willows, uh, because no one knows one end to the other of 
who then, who had the legitimate titles um, when they first arrived here on the shores from France and everywhere else and just jumped on the land and started making their own titles, you see. And so the British can wipe them all out. Even the land in the South Island has got Manukau's name all over it. I can go there and pinpoint it and put a peg in the ground with the Parapara and the Manukau right down Motueka, right, right along the coastline. There's the Manukau grave sites that I've got from Mohi because he's marked it all out for me. All those and the Chatham Islands too. So the Moriori, I've just been told from good sources that they've been looking at who's on Chatham Islands. It's these Turehu, Ate Parahe. They're the ones that are uh, hiding in the bush. And they are more the UFO family, the Manukau family. Believe it or not, he's got the blue eyes that looks like alien eyes. When you look in his eye, you can see it. I had a good look at it. And it's piercing. It's piercing. So they, they can see in the dark. And they buried their, their dead standing up in a tree. See, that's how they did it. And all of that stuff is still lurking in the back of my head from all the graphic stories of all that happened in those warring times when Mohi's Ngātika Atua Apu was fighting Ngāpū. But we won't go into that. We're ahead now in our times and we have to let it all go inside that marae at Waitangi on the 28th of October 2016. I'm making a public statement here, a bold statement to the world that we are native here to park all our history in a nice place inside that marae and move on. Move on and pick up our flag and start trading direct to the King of Britain, UK, King Ernest Augustus V, reigning monarch, sovereign. Salic law forbids women succeeding from the King's front. Okay, by default, the Queen has gone to the EU Parliament in contradiction of that title in Westminster, and there's a void there that the Governor-General Jerry Matiparai is going to try and fill as a Maori. Well, Maori is invented in 1945. I'm going there as the original native. He's he's not he's he's not a Matiparai. He's an Andrews, white man. You see, just like the Arabs, the Saudis, they wear veils and they're hiding. It's a white man with a dark skin. You see that crooked as hell and he's not going to get away with it by going to England to fill the void of the Queen when she's over there and telling him what to do from the EU Parliament from one country to the other. His conflict contradicts the law of a King. I'm going there, I'm talking for the King. That's what I'm saying to King, I'm talking for King William. As he started to get the same as the Captain said when they hopped off the ship and came here to Kororareka and said the land belongs to the King. Right? The land belongs to the king. What they're saying is the document belongs to the king, what's written on it, not the land, because the king don't live here. He's just written the laws, because he's saying we had no laws. We did have laws. We still have laws. We have Moai Tikana law, L-O-R-E, not the Tituruwhenua Land Act. That's Pākehā put that together. All right? And the Maoris. And the Maoris, you take it out of the definition, you take it out of context of what, how it is written, you pull it to bits like a mechanic, I'm a mechanic, you pull it all to bits, stack them up, all the bits over there and all the bits over there that belong to England and all the bits that belong to here. Then you look at the surnames and find who put it together. You'll always find it's a white man, not the native. The white man put it together, right? And he's talking to himself in the mirror because the crown invented the words Maori and Iwi because they're really talking to themselves in the mirror and nothing to do with us. See, that's why they win all the time. That's why they, they win, because of the, when the Ma Ma Moai word is on the documents, they can't talk. 
thingy to watch this video. The word Maori is the Crown invention, 1945, the Boer War, that period, right? And King George the Third period of time back in Africa Boer War, and before before that even. It all adds up to that. What I'm saying, right? So now all you have to do is intuition, use your intuition to figure out how they managed to steal the land and put their name on it when your name is still on it. Okay? I'll, I'll do the paperwork for that well, after Cook Street. I'll go and sort Cook Street out and finish it off because the police stepped in my road and tampered with my contract. By default, the Queen has abandoned ship in Admiralty and gone into EU Parliament in Brussels and left the place in a mess. I'm going after where all the money's missing from the Queen Victoria Trust on this Titi Marae side. In the, this is a debtor side, maybe debtor in Titi Marae, to the Crown John Key. That's his memorial, the 1840 treaty, has no end date to its contract. It's illegal. You're supposed to have a day when you're finished to give it back, give the land back. In the other side, it's got its contract with their flag. That, that's receipt of the contract, right? And it can terminate the contract with the British settlers and John Key's people if they don't turn up. If the Navy doesn't turn up, we can make a decision ruling in that court. Right? That's what I'm saying. I'm giving them time to... I know it's only a week left, but that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes when you're doing things by yourself and thinking outside the square. So, the Navy is expected to turn up to say if they want to stay here or go home back to England. That's the way it is. That boat is there, ready to hop on it. Maybe you've got to put some paddles and things on it around the mast, build a ship around the mast, then push it in the water and go back to England. That's about what it comes to, Kingy, and the people watching this video around the world. It's nice and quiet in here, and I'm, I'm, I'm in darkness, and I need to do one light here. And I'm saying this out loud, that we're in a contract with that flag, still, while we hold on to it. It's not that it's there to just go up and down the road, but they go up and down the road to make people aware that it's still a live contract. It's something to be proud of. It's something that got you on these lands. Every one of you people in the world that have come here to live have come here under someone's jurisdiction. And the courts have fashioned it around themselves collect the money in a Queen's Bench Court. We're on the other side in the Waitangi Marae as a King's Bench Court creditor to levy debt, the debtors in the other side with their memorials next to that marae. And King can go and park himself in the other marae and carry on business, but we are leaving, we're not going to upset the Iwi's business. We're simply using the Marae is our base for our documents, our legal connection to Britain with that shipmast there to the Royal Navy, the British Navy and military and government Westminster. There. And that mast, that's one mortgage number two. Land title mortgage for the land at that time of the Navy buying the land, okay, and the Navy on the other side buying the land. The government bought the land, right? the government bought the land, not any individual. The Crown bought the land and set its government up in Russell. And that's when the Napuri chief, Honeheke, chopped down the flag four times because he didn't want them anymore. But it's too late, they already planted themselves around the country, putting things up all over the place without any authority. Even when the Australians came here and put their news and company here with their money, the commercial notes from Australia, 
immigrant doing their law illegally because they didn't get sovereignty. They bought their sovereignty from Australia, from Britain to Australia, here, Melbourne time, and started selling the land over here when they had no authority from Britain to here. No one had sovereignty from Britain to sell any land. That's why when the British come bankrupt, they went bankrupt. That company went bankrupt and the British stepped in and took the land and reissued title. We're, we're just about at that point now where we, we uh, uh, as a land, na native land commissioner, only because I know all land and how they work, how to, how to do transactions in real estate <coughs> to convert into money and into shares, land shares and all the rest of commerce and all that and um, can put a figure on anything uh, under those old laws with the pound note. We're going back on the pound note currency straight to Britain on a par with that pound note and boost their pound note up with our pound note. Okay. We have the right, the legal right to use the pound note. King Tafia and Waikato under this Te Rau Waikato Wharaherehere. That's where that side comes in. Right? The pound note went to Waikato into King Tafia because from Munga Tauteri till the Hapu there where Te Rau Waikato Wharaherehere came from, he put the banknotes together. He put the commerce together years earlier. Right, in 1820 to 1833, he came back, and away they went with, with the pound note uh, in 1888. Okay, in 1888, that's when King Tafia got his pound note. He had to get the authority because he was already set up with um, Terawakato Farahere uh, Bank. He, he set the bank up, that's why Ili Manukau trying to get a bank going, global bank here in New Zealand and fizzled out of how it is today. <coughs> and it's, he's probably got something, but his money was coming from China. And I, I, I'll always stick to the pound note in Britain. That's the right path to go, not not through any other money system. I'm um, to make that point quite clear, Kingy. We're sticking to our guns with the military. If you're a military man, we'll stick to the British because that's who you're fighting for, the British and them being here. He went to war in Vietnam and came back alive. And good, 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 good that you're still walking around. All the shrapnel bits still, Agent Orange, all those little bits around, worse than my ringing ears, you know, pals, okay, what you have to go through. Agent Orange or rest of it. But I'm saying, you're a military man, to speak, no one can speak ahead of you because what I do is military. Everything I do under this flag is military. Is that clear? That's where the law is made for commerce from one country to the other through the military. Without the military, you, are, you can't function without protection. The British are obligated to protect us and our business between here and Britain. No well. That's it. That's our business. Okay, so that's all for now. I hope you get something out of that, uh, Matt Taylor, in, in England. And uh, take it seriously. Um, what I'm saying is quite true. That, I mean to say it really is true where the commerce started from that period of time, 1838 and again. Forget about all the other kings and queens because they did not have the pound note currency and King William IV, before he became king, set up, he was in New York. He was stationed from the Navy in New York to set up the stock exchange. So he was very much where the Pope is now with all the money in the world. The Pope is his friend. Now you see Donald Trump sitting next to the Catholic Bishop in the Parliament because the Vatican runs all the Parliaments in the world and the University. See? So you say that's what the Vatican is using, the Patrick name. Okay? So, Jamie, if you don't like money, you don't have to. Um, I said to her jokingly today, I'll find another Patrick with two legs to take her place because she thinks She's not a secretary of state. Hmm. Have another look at it. 
you can say what you want to be, you can uh, and put your mind to it. You, I, I will say, you won't be in prison where Hillary Clinton and her family will be, with Obama in prison. That's where they should be now. They should have been there longer. You'll be free to take her place as a title, Secretary of State. They can put you in there and get some other people to run the place. As long as you listen to what I say and Kenny say, you'll be a Secretary of State of a Maui Federal State Commonwealth Government of the World. You don't have to be that clever. You'll pick it up like anything. It's like Uma Abedin. When she went in, she learned from scratch. She learned very fast how to, how to, how to go inside a Senate and, and act for the highest woman in the world position as her uh, assistant. See? But that was for money. That, that was for money and for, um, for a position of power. Okay, so this and a Patrick name, any Patrick who can take that position is quite welcome to it. It's going to be a woman, though, um, for this um, fitting position. Um, otherwise, it has to be a, uh, uh, somebody else that's very clear on how it works for us in the commercial world. Um, Jamie's got legal expertise and experience in investigation of anything I put online. It's very good because you can go searching for it and it needs to be a paid job so unless it's a paid job it can't be a job until we get things going and Cook Street is right up on as soon as I get out of um, Waitangi that's it, we put the law straight onto those landowners, you Simon Brent Roundtree and James Pierce Brown, you're on the stand. And I'm going straight in without a lawyer because I don't trust them anymore, all barristers, anymore, because they twisted the law and I never got my court case. They lost. All of you people, Pakeas, lost the case because your barrister, being white, looked after the judge. And he still managed to cash the money in from my bail bond, which is a contract. I'm going to have them up on contract because that's my expertise in contracts with a king. You mess around with the king, you get the hanging noose rug from this marae, the king and his napui. If they were like they were in the old days, he won't be around long this time. Right? But we've moved ahead now from that mentality. But Obama's using that force because the Queen gives him that admiralty law of the King to go and kill people and assassinate people they don't like that talks about them. That's really bad. And Scalia, the uh, Attorney General Scalia, got rid of him and, and by illegal means of assassination. President Kennedy, all those people who've been assassinated was because this cabal of Rothschild and Soros and Hillary Clinton and Obama and all those crooked people in the black world who are working for money and screwing anybody to get it, even the drugs, opium and all that sort of thing. They've got those, all those people, the king will get rid of you all because you're using his law and abusing it. That's all I can say. Okay? Once people know what to do with this badge, you can go and get your land back. That's what I'm saying, you get your land back. But I had to do it first. I had to make an example of the Panama Papers of John Key, TPPA, contract, illegal, without our consent, the King. And also all the hidden fraud inside the corporations that we're investigating one at a time. And you can't win because the police have no evidence, insufficient evidence, as everything I've got online now. The judge can't use because everybody knows. It's a waste of time going to court. Okay? You're trapped from all sides. You're trapped from by Moai. Moai is standing in London. Is the mana whenua. That is not tangata whenua. Mana whenua. He's been...
built as Earth, title to the Earth planet. Okay, that's all. It's just a plain statue of a figure of an Earth, Atua or spirit. Okay, that's all. Finish. I go and have my dinners now and have dinner and clean my place and get ready to go by Jungi tomorrow night about one o'clock in the morning um, travel through the night okay so if I had to go to Whakatana I'd go down there then go up so it'd be a long drive okay bye for now John here in Otahu, Auckland, New Zealand have a pleasant night or day